Karibu sana mtazamaji wa kipindi hiki asubuhi ya leo leo ni siku ya Jumatatu na mimi naye kuletea neno asubuhi ya leo ninaitwa Andrew Nganga mimi ni muhubiri niko pale Nyeri mjini na na hudumu na huduma inaitwa Rema Missionary Outreach International uh, lengo kubwa katika huduma hii inayoifanya ni kuweza kujenga mwili wa Kristo lakini haswa tunalenga sana sana kusaidia wa Kristo katika eneo la maombi na pia katika eneo la kuhusika katika kuvua nafsi ama kwa Kiingereza ndio missions na pia katika eneo la kuweza kuwa chombo ambacho Mungu anaweza kutumia hivyo basi tunaamini Mungu ya kwamba anapotaka kuleta ufufuo wakati wote huwa anakusudi revival is always with a purpose na purpose ya revival ama ufufuo siku zote huwa ni kwa sababu Mungu anataka wenye dhambi pia wafikiwe na waletwe kwa Yesu Kristo lakini kabla ya kuwekwa na revival lazima kuwe na maombi kwa hivyo unaona mambo haya matatu yanashikana people should be mobilized for prayer once they are mobilized for prayer God is able to come in revival and once there is an ongoing revival souls can be won to Christ. Mambo hayo matatu yanapelekana pamoja. Hivyo basi katika huduma ya rema tunatilia maanani sana kukumbusha kanisa na Wakristo ya kwamba Mungu ametuahidi revival. Na hivyo basi tusitoke kwenye maombi tukae katika maombi tuendelee kutafuta uso wa Bwana tuendelee kumuita maana alituahidi revival na tunahitaji na tunashukuru kwa sababu ya mwamko ambao tunauhisi katika sehemu tofauti za nchi yetu na pia sehemu tofauti ulimwenguni lakini tusiache tuendelee maana Mungu anataka kuleta revival ambayo italeta mavuno kwa nyumba yake tena Hebu leo tusome neno lake katika kitabu cha Luka Luke uh, tutasoma chapter 9 verse 57 kisha tutaenda chapter 10 verse 1 and 2 uh, Hebu nitasoma kwa Kiingereza lakini nitaanza kuelezea kwa Kiswahili na naamini ya kwamba Mungu atakubariki asubuhi ya leo Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him Lord I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 10 verse 1 and 2. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go then he said to them the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few therefore pray the lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest asubuhi ya leo nataka tuongee kuhusu following jesus Uh, tukiangalia katika haya maandiko ambayo nimesoma kuna watu watatu ambao walikuja na wote walikuwa na nia ya kumfuata Yesu. Lakini kabla hatujaongea habari zao mwandishi wa kitabu hiki ni Luka. Luka ndiye ambaye aliandika kitabu hiki. Ningetaka kutaja tu ya kwamba Luka hata hakuwa mmoja wa mitume. He was not one of the apostles. Lakini alikuwa ni rafiki wa karibu sana wa Paulo na alitembea na Paulo na akaona vile Mungu alikuwa anafanya akimtumia na Luke akaamua anataka kuandika a correct a correct um, written um, letter 
ama written history ya yale ambayo aliona yakifanyika. Kwa mfano, tunasoma ya kwamba ye ndiye aliandika kitabu cha Luka na alikuwa anaandika yale yote yalitendeka katika maisha ya Kristo. Tena ni aliandika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume, ni yeye aliandika pia yale aliyokuwa yakitendeka na mitume. Hivyo basi ni muhimu sana kumfuatilia Luka kidogo kwa sababu yeye ndio aliandika vitabu hivi viwili ambao vinatusaidia sana kuelewa mambo yanayohusiana na revival, mambo yanayohusiana na maombi. Luka ameandika sana sana mambo ya maombi na akahusisha maombi na revival. Na si hivyo tu amehusisha pia revival na bringing in of the harvest ama kuleta wenye dhambi kwa Yesu Kristo. Kwa hivyo mambo yote matatu yale ambayo ninasema ningetaka kukuletea wewe kama Mkristo tunayapata katika maandishi ya Luka in the book of Luke and also in the book of Acts. Luke was actually a Gentile. He was not even a Jew. Luke was well educated. Ni mtu alikuwa amesoma kiasi and he was a doctor by profession, daktari. Hii inapaswa kututia moyo ya kwamba Mungu hatumii tu wale tunawaita wahubiri, lakini hata wale ambao ni wafanyi kazi. Wengine ni watu wa taaluma kama doctors, lawyers, na wengine Mungu pia anawatumia. Na tunaona ya kwamba Mungu alimtumia akaandika maandiko kitabu cha Luka which is one of the gospels na akaandika pia uh, the book of Acts. Na nasisitiza tena mambo hayo matatu prayer leading to revival and revival leading to soul winning and bringing in of the harvest. Mungu atusaidie tuweze kushikanisha haya mambo matatu katika juma hili tunapoanza uh, juma hili pamoja na wewe. Tunasoma ya kwamba akaandika kuhusu hawa watu watatu ambao walikuwa wote wanania ya kumfuata Yesu. Lakini kila mmoja wao alikuwa na kitu fulani cha kumzuia asimfuate Yesu vile ambavyo inapaswa. Hebu tuanze na wa kwanza. Wa kwanza ndiye aliyejileta kwa Yesu na akamwambia I will follow you. Yeye mwenyewe hakuulizwa na mtu. Yesu akamwambia njoo nifuate mwenyewe aliangalia Yesu akaona matendo ya Yesu, akaona vile Yesu ufanya mambo, akajileta mwenyewe akasema I will follow you. Wakati mwingine ukiangalia unaona ni kama alifurahishwa sana na yale waliona katika maisha ya Yesu mpaka akasema nitakufuata. Lakini tunaona hakuwa amefikiria vizuri kufuata Yesu ni kusema nini ama kufuata Yesu kuna maanisha nini? Yesu akamjibu na jibu la Yesu ndio linatusaidia kuona kumbe huyu mtu alikuwa hajajitayarisha vizuri kumfuata. Maandiko anasema Yesu akamjibu akamwambia, "Mbweha wana mashimo na wakienda na ndege wangani pia wanaviota. Akimaanisha nini mbweha akitoka asubuhi aende atarudi ana mahali pa kurudi ako na mahali permanent ana nyumba permanent hata akitoka aende atarudi ndege akitoka kwa kiota chake jioni atarudi lakini Yesu akamwambia mimi sina kiota sina mahali ambapo eti ni pangu permanent ni nini Yesu alikuwa anamwambia huyu mtu sikiza hapa mwenzangu alikuwa anamwambia kama umeamua kunifuata ningetaka ujue mambo fulani kunihusu mimi. Na asubuhi ya leo ningetaka tushike haya mambo machache kuhusu Yesu. Jambo la kwanza akamwambia mimi I am ever on the move. I am Christ on a mission. Mimi ni Kristo na nimekuja duniani on a mission. Sija kuja duniani kuketi, kutulia kupumzika ama kufurahia tu maisha ya ulimwengu. I am here for a purpose, for a season, for a mission and I'm willing to pursue it every day of my life. So anamwambia huyu mtu, 
Mbweha ana mahali permanent. Mahali ya meseto, akitoka subu ya tarudi jioni mimi, leo niko Galilaya. Kesho nitaenda sehemu nyingine. Kesho hiyo nyingine nitaenda sehemu nyingine. Ninataka kumaliza kazi Mungu alinituma kufanya. Na kazi niliyotumwa na baba kufanya huenda itanizipeleka katika ulimwengu ama popote katika sehemu tofauti za ulimwengu huu. Ulimwengu wa Yesu wakati huo ulikuwa ni Middle East na tunasoma alianzia huduma Nazareti, akarudi akaenda Kapernaum, akakaa Galilaya katika eneo lile, akaondoka kapitia tena Jericho, akaenda upande wa Samaria, akaingia Jerusalem. He was on the move. Kristo anamwambia huyu mtu, when you choose to follow me, I want you to know what you decided to do. You have followed someone who is on a mission. Hallelujah. To follow Jesus is to follow someone who is going somewhere. Someone who is on a mission. Someone who wants to fulfill the mission. Now what is that mission? Yes, when he said mwenyewe, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. Yes, when I manisha kwamba nilikuja kwa ajili ya wenye dhambi, nilikuja ni watafuta waliopotea na ni waokoe. What is that mission again? Anasema mimi nilikuja ili waliopotea wapate kupatikana tena. Mali pengine anasema I came ili niharibu kazi za shetani katika John 1 John 3:8 anasema nilikuja ili niweze kuziharibu kazi zote za shetani you see Christ is on a mission to save Christ is on a mission to destroy the works of the devil anasema sija kuja kutulia nimekuja nikiwa na lengo la kuharibu kazi za shetani kila siku kila mahali Mahali pengine Biblia inatuambia popote Yesu alienda alitenda mema. He's on a mission. What is his mission? Kutenda mema. Akikuta wale ambao hawana amani awape amani. Akikuta wale ambao hawana furaha awape furaha. Akikuta watu waliopotea awasaidie kupata msamaha. He came as one on a mission. What is his mission again? Ye tena ndio anasema ya kwamba alikuja ili tuwe na uzima na tuwe nao tele tele. Maandiko yanasema the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Christ came as one who is on a mission to save, to deliver, to heal. Maandiko yanasema alipoingia Galilaya, maandiko yanasema ya kwamba ikasemekana a great light has shone where darkness was prevailing. Kristo popote aliingia hakuna kitu kilibaki vile kilikuwa. Popote Yesu alienda alitenda mema na popote aliingia alibadilisha pale mahali. That was the testimony that light has come. Light has come to affect the darkness. Why Christ is on a mission. Alipoanza huduma alisema hivi the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor he has also anointed me to open the eyes of the blind he has also anointed me to open the prison doors to set the captives free to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord to heal the broken hearted christ is one who is on a mission to save on a mission to deliver on a mission to heal on a mission sasa huyu mtu naye anamwambia Jesus I will follow you wherever you go Yesu akamwambia I want you to understand first I am on a mission are you willing to join me on my mission kumfuata Yesu ni kujiunga na Yesu katika mission yake to follow Jesus is to join him in his mission here on earth to follow jesus is to participate in his mission here on earth to follow jesus is to be part of what he came to do here on earth to follow jesus is to support what he came to do here on earth 
Hii mimi inanisaidia kwa sababu kuna wa Kristo ambao walipokuja kwa Yesu walikuja kama huyu mtu wa kwanza ambaye aliamua atamfuata Yesu kwenda naye kila mahali lakini hakuwa maelewa kumfuata Yesu ni kusema nini Wengine walifikiri kuja kwa Yesu ni kuketi kupumzika kutulia na kufurahia Picha tulikuwa nayo ni kwamba Yesu ameketi mahali amepumzika kwa hivyo hata sisi tunamjoin katika kuketi na kupumzika hapa duniani na kufurahia kufurahia maisha ya hapa ulimwenguni lakini Kristo anawaambia hapana si hivyo foxes of holes the birds of the air have nests but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head na ndio maana maisha ya Mkristo yanafananishwa na safari Hebu angalia wana wa Israeli walipotoka Misri Mungu akawaambia waondoke na waelekee Canaan maisha yao yote tunaelezewa ilikuwa ni safari na maisha ya Mkristo ni safari ndio maana Petro anasema we are not settlers we are pilgrims here on earth pilgrims pilgrims ni nani wasafiri we are here for a reason for a season and for a purpose and for a mission and what is that mission ni ile ile Yesu alikuja kufanya na ndio maana Yesu alisema i am the light of the world lakini akarudi akawaambia you are the light of the world akasema i am come that the world may have light akatuambia hata sisi he has made us the church to be a city on a hill that cannot be hidden that we may shine the light on the earth kisha akasema as my father sent me so send i you in other words the mission of christ is the mission of the church the potential of christ is the potential of the church the work jesus came to do is the work the church is called to do and who is the church you and me believers wale ambao tumemwamini Yesu Kristo we are the church and so huyu mtu hatujui kama alifuata Yesu lakini alionyesha intention ya kumfuata lakini Yesu akamwelezea to follow me you must accept my mission because to follow me is to participate in my mission i am christ on the move i am christ on a mission i am christ who is going somewhere may you join the lord in his mission lakini hebu tumwangalie mtu wa pili kwa haraka mtu wa pili naye akaja na huyu maandiko inatuambia si yeye alipenda mwenyewe kumfuata Yesu un tofauti kidogo na wa kwanza huyu ni Yesu alimwalika he was invited maandiko yanasema then he said to another follow me but he said lord let me first go and bury my father akasema niache kwanza niende nizike baba yangu kabla hatujaelezea kuhusu uh, huyu mtu wa pili maana ningetaka tuwe na muda kidogo na yeye hebu tumwache hivyo hivyo tutaendelea kutoka hapo kesho lakini kwa sasa ni kuelezea hivi mtazamaji ya kwamba kufuata Yesu kwanza maana yake ni nini ni kuhusika katika mwito wake siku ya leo kubali kuhusika katika mwito wa Bwana kubali kuhusika katika maombi kuhusika katika kumpenda Mungu kutembea katika maisha ya utakatifu na kutumiwa na Mungu kuwahubiria wengine na kuwaleta wengine kwa Yesu Kristo waweze kuokoka na kumjua na Mungu ataendelea kukufanya anayemfuata Yesu inavyostahili Mungu akubariki asubuhi ya leo uwe na siku yenye baraka Bwana bariki kazi za mikono yako na akutangulie na ebu yule ambao umeamua kumfuata akuongoze siku ya leo. Na we unaye nitazama na uja mpa Yesu Kristo maisha yako unaweza kuamua leo ya kwamba ndiyo siku utaokoka na kumpatia Yesu Kristo maisha yako na kuanza kumfuata 
siku zote za maisha yako amua huyu mtu ni kuamua tu aliamua akasema bwana nitakufuata siku zote za maisha yangu amua sema kama huyu mtu bwana Yesu nitakufuata siku zote za maisha yangu bwana akubariki